Wigwusen Nitham Pagaskata Squamsen. That is to say, good day, friends. How have you been? Uh, my name is Raymond Two Hawks Watson. I am Pumham Sachem of the historic Meshpag Narragansett tribe, which is a band of the mighty Narragansett nation based here in Providence. Uh, my title is the Pumham Sachem, but I do want to make sure to acknowledge and give proper respects to Chief Matthew Seventh Hawk. Thomas, Grand Sachem of the Narragansett right. Nation, a federally recognized tribe down in South County. Yeah. Um, I also want to thank the organizers for inviting me to be a part of this. Uh, I'm one of the younger activists around in the city. That's right. So I'm definitely humbled and honored to be here to share some words um, about what's been going on. Um, in particular, I was asked to speak about racial profiling, um, how it kind of connects to Rosa Parks. Um, and I think that um, everything involving civil rights, and I really don't even like using civil rights, I prefer to use human rights because it is human rights issues. No human deserves to be treated as a second class citizen, regardless of what their skin tone is or where they're from. So, particularly because that was going on all the way back when Rosa Parks uh, refused to remove herself from a bus and it's still going on today, it shows us that there's a lot of work to be done. So I'm happy to be one of the younger activists out here kind of picking up that torch and I'm also very grateful that we have elders and individuals who have been doing this for so long that are willing to pass the torch because we as younger activists can't take the torch if the ones who have the torch aren't willing to pass it so I would also like to acknowledge all of the activists who have been doing this for decades because right. they've laid the path for what I'm doing right. today. Um, in particular, I want to talk about what's been going on in Ferguson and the response here in Providence. I'm sure everyone's aware that the highway got shut down last week. Everyone was up in arms about it. Oh, it was dangerous, this, that, and the other. Well, to that I say it's dangerous being a youth these days. Because not only do you got to worry about gangs, not only do you got to worry about drug dealers and all that, but you also have to worry about police officers who should be protecting you from those elements, treating you like you're one of them. So our youth are tired of it. They're tired of being told to be patient, to let the system work its well. How, how long have we been trying to get the comprehensive racial profiling bill passed? How many years? More than a decade. More than a decade. So while we're telling our youth, <coughs> be patient, you know, be respectful, you know, don't put yourself in any dangerous situations, 10 years later, they're still making the same request of us as adults. And I'm putting to this, to this to us as adults because it's only been the adults that I've been hearing concerned about that much. I'm here to tell you right now, I encourage them all the way. Because if we as adults aren't going to address their issues for them, they should address them themselves. Just like if we as black people can't get this country to address issues of concerns for ourselves, we should address them. The brother Boo Hackney always talks about it's on us it's on us, so let's not discourage our youth from taking up the mantle and doing what the youth back in the civil rights did because what we need to remember is it wasn't the adults who pushed for change back then. It was the adults telling the youth, that's too dangerous, hold on, you're shaking things up too much. That's always the conversation of adults to youth. It's always the youth who say to the adults, you know what, we respect what you're saying but we disagree this is what needs to be done because we're the ones being impacted by it daily. How many of us can sit here and say on a daily basis we're harassed by police officers? Pulled over, have your pants pulled down, told to stay out of trouble after they search you for no reason. That's a youth problem. And if we're not dealing with that, what right do we have to tell them to simmer down or be patient? It's absurd. Our job as adults is to create the next group of leaders for our community. And that's what's going on right now with Ferguson. So to all of the youth out there who are going to see this on the news tonight, potentially if the news put me on there, um, I encourage you, I honor you, and I respect you. And I asked, um, being that I am, you know, representing the native culture here, and I think a lot of times we don't see enough of us natives out here fighting for this sort of stuff, because we were the first ones to be victimized on this continent, and it continues to this day. So, also coming from the native perspective, I'm telling everyone out there, I don't care what the powers that be say, one of the chiefs from the Narragansett Nation says if they're disrespecting you, do something to protect yourself and make your voice heard. So, on that note, I do want to share this honor song, it won't be too long. Um, it is an honor song that was shared with me by the brother Artie Red Medicine Crippen of the Shinnecock Nation, who's also a shaman. It was shared with him by a great chief uh, by the name of Bright Canoe, who passed on. 
The name of the song is Sunset, and it is an honoring song. Um, a lot of times in many Native American songs, they're not actually words, but it's the spirit or the feeling behind it that lets you know when it's appropriate to be sung and the reason that it is being sung. So to all of the youth that are standing up for their rights, to all of the adults that are supporting them, to everyone who not only speaks about what's going on, but takes the time to get involved and make something happen because we're absolutely right. Activism is not a field that we get a lot of wins in. But we're not in it for the win. We do want to win, but we're in it for the fight. Because if someone doesn't fight, how much worse is this situation going to get? So I honor all the warriors Woo! out there, all Woo! of the individuals who are taking the time to stand up for what's right, who aren't paying attention to the national media and the way that they twist stuff and don't report what's actually going on. To all of the officers out there who are doing the right thing every day, who aren't afraid to speak out about the nonsense that's going on in these police departments, not only here in Providence, but across this world. I honor them as well because we're not anti-law enforcement, and that's how they like to pitch us a lot. We're not anti-law enforcement, we're anti-disrespectful and unprofessional law enforcement. And if anyone supports that, I got a problem with you too.